Welcome back to Mystery and Imagination, where we dive into the mysterious world of the supernatural. Today, we're going to explore the diverse descriptions of ghosts and the eerie locations they've been spotted. Our first type of ghost is the full apparition. These spectral entities appear incredibly lifelike, resembling the living. People have reported encountering them in various locales worldwide, from cozy homes to historically significant sites. The advantage of witnessing a full apparition is the detailed evidence it provides, often captured on camera. However, the downside is that skeptics might attribute these to optical illusions or hoaxes. Next up, we have shadow figures. These dark, shadowy beings are commonly spotted in places with a history of paranormal activity, like old buildings, homes, and cemeteries. Shadow figures can send shivers down your spine, offering that classic haunted experience. On the flip side, critics argue that they might be tricks of the light or your imagination playing tricks on you. Orbs, our third type, are small, round, or translucent. They often show up in photographs taken at supposedly haunted locations. Orbs in photos can be exciting and intriguing for ghost hunters, providing potential evidence. Yet, skeptics insist that orbs are likely dust, moisture, or camera artifacts. Now, poltergeists are known for causing physical disturbances. You might encounter them in homes and even historic sites. The advantage is that poltergeist activity is usually hard to ignore, leaving a strong impression. However, critics may attribute these disturbances to mundane explanations, like plumbing issues. The Lady in White is a classic apparition often seen in various locations, from old houses and theaters to cemeteries. Seeing the Lady in White can provide a spine-tingling, ghostly encounter. Yet, some argue these sightings could be the result of cultural influences and stories. Spirits of children are often reported in homes, schools, and places associated with tragic events. Encountering child spirits can evoke strong emotions and empathy. However, skeptics may question the validity of such experiences due to emotional factors. Residual hauntings, our seventh type, involve repetitive energy imprints found in various settings, like battlefields and old buildings. The advantage is that residual hauntings offer a glimpse into history and can be scientifically intriguing. Yet, critics may argue that these are psychological effects or mere coincidences. Ghosts of animals, like dogs and cats, are often reported in locations where they shared strong bonds with their owners. Seeing ghostly pets can provide comfort and a sense of connection. On the other hand, skeptics might argue that these are merely grief-induced hallucinations. Our final type is apparitions in uniform, often reported on battlefields, in historic buildings, and museums. Encounters with these entities can offer a unique historical perspective and possibly validate legends. Critics might dismiss them as reenactors or overactive imaginations. Older individuals in old-fashioned clothing are sometimes reported in historic homes and castles. Encounters with elderly figures can transport you back in time, creating a unique historical connection. However, skeptics may attribute these to vivid imaginations or suggest they are simply reenactors. And there you have it, 10 common types of ghost descriptions and their associated locations. Remember, ghostly encounters are highly subjective, open to interpretation, and a source of endless fascination for believers and skeptics alike.